let's get the show on the road. Why put customers first? Well, let, let's backtrack a little bit. Let's go back to where business in Australia, and for that matter, the rest of the Western world, has come from. Post-World War II was a time of great prosperity. It was a time of high demand, and it was a time of low supply. High demand because leading into World War II, there was a Great Depression, and, and consumers did not have the spending power that we have today. During the war, resources were scarce, so things were in short supply because most of our resources were being put towards the war effort. So post-World War II, there was a huge pent-up demand for all sorts of things, just about anything. And business was in the fortunate of just about being able to do what they wanted, when they wanted, produce what they wanted, and they could sell it. They could sell it. And that went on for quite a while. It went on for quite a while. And, and, and it developed an attitude and an approach to dealing with customers that is still prevalent today despite the fact that that environment is no longer around. Business's attitude was, let's produce this and then who can we sell it to? And then when we found who we could sell it to, our question was, well, how can we sell them more? There was very little regard or consideration for what people really wanted. That wasn't the point. And for some businesses, still isn't the point. So we had high demand, we had low supply. But then there was a lack of competition. But then things started to change. In the early 1960s, more and more businesses were starting up. Because they could, people could see that there was money to be made. And where there's money to be made, there are going to be people open up a business. And that started to change some of the dynamics because businesses for the first time started to discover that they couldn't sell everything that they were producing. We were also in very much in an era where services supply was pretty much non-existent. Most business was focused on products, selling a product. Services really weren't a big deal. The, you know, the services industry really only started to get a real move on in the 1980s. And now, of course, lots and lots and lots of businesses are about services rather than just about products. And that in itself changes the dynamics of the market because lots of things have changed. We now find ourselves in the beginning of the 21st century in an environment like no other that we've experienced before. And the balance of power in terms of the transaction between a business and a customer has changed dramatically and forever. And it's changed for three reasons primarily. First of all, competition. There is way, way, way more competition today than there ever has been before. Customers have never had so much choice. And that gives them a degree of power when they exercise those choices. Customers are also far better educated today. They have access to so much more information today. The internet has changed forever the way that people source information. There are many businesses now that struggle in their environment as a consequence of just that one thing. Gone are the days where a customer goes into a business and says, hey, I have a situation here, I'm not sure what to do. Have you got a product or a service that can help me here? And what should I do about it? And that's not happening much anymore because customers are doing their research before they go into the stores, before they go to the business. And they're actually now saying, here's what I want, here's what I know I can do. Can you provide those things? They're not asking for advice so much anymore because they're finding out all the stuff themselves. And there's a number of industries that are, are at the coal face of that. But every industry is going to feel the ripple effect of this. You know, for example, the travel industry, travel agents, they struggle today. Why? Well, think about it. Think about it. 10, 15 years ago, if you wanted to travel somewhere, it wasn't easy for you to make your own bookings. Communication costs would have been too high. How do you find out what, about a hotel and where it is and what it's got? And how do you make the booking? How do you know that it's going to be there? So in the environment of all of that uncertainty, we go to a travel agent and say, help. 
But it's not like that anymore, is it? Because if you want to go somewhere now, all you've got to do is boot up the computer, connect to the net, and start doing a Google search. And within a half an hour, you've got an itinerary.